finally, after 70 days of research and discussions, NASA has made a firm decision regarding the fate of the Starliner spacecraft. But what about the fate of the two astronauts? All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before getting into the main content, I got to tell you, thank you so much for supporting our channel these last three years. Right now, we got 86,000 subscribers, so close to 100,000. To hit this milestone, we need your help. So please press that subscribe button now, and that way you are guaranteed to never miss out on any of our exciting daily videos each day. All right, let's continue. Two astronauts getting stranded in space might sound like the plot of a Hollywood sci-fi movie. But for two NASA crew members, it's now become the reality. Commander Barry Wilmore and pilot Sunita Williams are currently in limbo aboard the International Space Station. Meanwhile, the concluding meetings are still ongoing, and the most recent one was held on August 14th. The space agency gave an update on Boeing Starliner's troubled test mission, and unfortunately in this mission, we got some useful information about the ill-fated spacecraft, often referred to as Stuckliner. <laughs> During the meeting, NASA finally set a return date for the cursed spacecraft. According to a famous space journal, whom I greatly admire, Eric Berger, he said, NASA's tentative date for Starliner's undocking from the ISS is September 6th, whether the craft is crewed or not. This means that whether the two astronauts on board Starliner return or not, the spacecraft has to undock from the space station by September 6th. This extends the original test mission, planned for eight days starting June 15th, to a total of 12 weeks, precisely 93 days. In fact, Starliner's batteries were only designed to hold energy for 45 days, and Boeing and NASA have found a way to double this daytime to 90 days. However, since more than six weeks have gone by, the batteries have been recharged at the station, but they can only continue to provide power for a limited time before they completely go kaput. This is an extremely urgent situation, leading NASA to possibly lose confidence in the new spacecraft's capabilities. Instead, Ken Bowersox, deputy admin of NASA's Space Operations Mission Directorate, announced that before the end of August, NASA would conduct a high-level flight readiness review to make a final decision on the fate of Starliner. The specific decision will determine whether the two astronauts will return on Starliner or if they'll stay on Dragon until 2025 for their return. It's a fairly major discussion to decide about whether or not we're going to have a crew on board Starliner for return, Bowersox said. We've got time available before we bring Starliner home, and we want to use that time wisely. We're expecting that the data analysis will be ready for a flight readiness review around the end of next week, potentially the beginning of the following week. If NASA decides to bring Wilmore and Williams home on Starliner, Bauer Sox said that the agency would have to accept more risks than officials initially anticipated. NASA officials can't quantify the additional risk that the propulsion system might pose to the astronauts if they return to Earth inside the spacecraft. On August 2nd, Boeing stated that they remain confident in the Starliner spacecraft and its ability to come back safely with crew. However, NASA officials have not expressed a similar confidence. At a meeting called the Program Control Board meeting earlier this month, NASA managers asked reps from various groups involved in Starliner whether they were ready to give the green light for Boeing's spacecraft to come back to Earth with a two-man crew. Many board members said no, leading NASA to postpone the senior agency officials' meeting to assess flight readiness, which was supposed to make the official go or no-go decision for Starliner's journey home. Bauer Sox mentioned that engineers would try to model the valves operation with a swollen Teflon seal next week and its impact on the thruster's performance. Managers will evaluate the model data, along with other test results, at another program control board meeting later next week. After that, NASA's leadership will convene a flight readiness review chaired by Bauer Sox. If there's no consensus from that review, the final decision might fall to NASA's highest-ranking civil servant, Jim Free, or a NASA administrator, Bill Nelson. There is some degree of risk in extending Wilmore and Williams to stay on the ISS and bringing them back to Earth on the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft early next year. If that happens, the astronauts would have to remain in orbit for more than eight months, and things could go wrong during the spaceflight. Their initial flight plan called for just an eight-day stay at the outpost. If NASA does decide to detach Starliner from the space station without the astronauts on board, there will be a brief period when the only way for Wilmore and Williams to get home is on the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft currently docked at the station. In that case, Dragon would have to re-enter the atmosphere with a six-person crew, opposed to the usual complement of just four. Wilmore and Williams would not be wearing pressure suits during the trip back to Earth. If this is how NASA proceeds, two launch and entry suits made by SpaceX for Wilmore and Williams will be sent up on the next Dragon mission at the end of September. 
This Dragon spacecraft will launch a two-person crew instead of a four on a five or six-month expedition, leaving empty seats for the Starliner astronauts to occupy it when it returns to Earth next year. Furthermore, the situation creates a dreadful waiting period. Waiting for things is difficult at the best of times. Under normal circumstances, it's frustrating, stressful, and gives us anxiety. But in extreme situations with high stakes, waiting can be purgatory. For the astronauts stuck on the ISS, anxiety about when they'll return, limited opportunities for activities, and fewer opportunities to contact friends and families combine to make their wait to return home feel much longer than six months, if it should come to that. So, what are the final questions that all of us are wondering about in the discussion regarding Starliner? First, could NASA delay the decision again? At the press conference, Bowersock said that it's getting a lot harder to delay the decision. He cited consumables and the need to use the ISS ports for cargo missions as reasons to avoid postponing the decision of whether or not Starliner returns crude or empty much longer. We're reaching a point where the last week in August we should really be making a call, if not sooner, Bowersock added. The second question is, if Starliner returns without astronauts, does that mean NASA will end its mission to seek a backup plan in space? NASA leads its commercial crew program to be able to pay multiple companies to send its astronauts to space. Boeing and SpaceX are considered different backup options or alternatives in case one company can't provide the service of sending astronauts to space or bringing them back in an emergency. All I can say is that our intent is to keep pressing to have two providers, Bowersock said. We got two very good companies and we want to develop two strong and capable spacecraft. We think we got a good chance of doing that, but the answer is always in the data, right? That's what we're doing this mission. Well, either way, NASA's statements indicate that they still want to maintain and continue using Starliner for future missions despite the unresolved issues. In fact, the problems with Starliner have yet to be clearly identified by Boeing and NASA because they haven't been able to figure them out. That's also why NASA is taking the remaining days to make a decision about Starliner's limited reusability. The crew capsule itself is designed to be recovered and flown again, but the faulty thrusters are housed in a part called the service module, which is jettisoned before re-entry and burns up in the atmosphere. This makes it impossible to conduct any kind of technical inspection after the spacecraft returns, and thus NASA is trying to gather as much info as possible from the telemetry data and monitoring before the service module gets lost forever. At the August 14th press conference, one reporter asked if it might be possible for a station astronaut to perform a spacewalk to assess the state of the thrusters. A suggestion, Joe Acaba, the agency's chief astronaut, quickly shot down. We're not doing a spacewalk, he said. The way this system's designed right now, we just don't get this hardware back, and there's not much we can do in real time. In the past, NASA might have been willing to push the crew a little harder, challenging those 1 in 270 odds and flying Wilmore and Williams home in a less than perfect ship. Astronauts have made it back to Earth in much more damaged spacecraft in the past, notably Apollo 13, which suffered a near catastrophic explosion on its way to the moon in 1970. And then there was Gemini 8, which spun out of control in orbit in 1966, nearly costing the lives of astronauts Neil Armstrong and Dave Scott before Armstrong wrestled the ship back under control and then hightailed it home. However, the twin losses of the Shuttle Challenger in 86 and Columbia in 2003 have left the agency much more risk-averse and led to institutional changes designed to encourage mission managers to raise concerns well in advance of such tragedies. For me personally, I've been very hyper-focused lately on the concept of combating organizational silence, said Russ DeLoach, chief of NASA's Safety and Mission Assurance. If you look at both, unfortunately, Challenger and Columbia, you can see cases where some people had the right data or a valid position to put forward, but the environment just didn't allow it. Challenger launched immediately during a Florida freeze, contributing to its foreseeable explosion and Columbia was flown home when it was not fit to re-enter the atmosphere. A rescue shuttle might have helped save that crew. That new caution leaves Wilmore and Williams stuck. That's all for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.